Hola familia, this is part two of PA versus MD. In this one, we go over compensation and pros and cons of going to PA or medical school. Thank you, Mario Navarro, for inviting me on this interview. He's a second year PA student in California. Make sure to check out part one down in the description and let us know what you think in the comments. All right, so now we're gonna dive into what everyone loves to talk about, money, <laughs> earning potential. So I'll let you kind of cite, I'm sure you've looked into this because when you're looking into any specialty, you're looking at how much money am I going to make? Because um, mm -hmm. it's not an easy path to get to this point and to take out loans. Um, and also, before I forget, I do want to mention, even though I am on a full scholarship with the NHSC, and I still have found myself because of just the cost of living out here in Sacramento to take on a few mm -hmm. more thousand dollars in loans just for living expenses. And so that is not uncommon. And um, so I don't know that you, I'll let you talk about the earning potential as a, as a family medicine doc. Yeah, I think if you go like on Doximity or those websites, I think average for like primary care is like 240 to 250. And that is with about like a, I think it's like a 50 to 60 hour work week, but the range is so massive. And yeah, primary care is one of the least, you know, compensated specialties. The United States really emphasizes like procedural care and not preventative care. And yeah. I really hope that changes in the future. You know, like deep back in my head, I'm like, dang, what if they switch it and we start like, making the big bucks later, you know, but that's kind of the range you can expect around 240 is like average. And then it can go up really high, like into 450s. You know, I've heard of private practices bringing in like half a million, you know, with a few partners. And then there's also like other models that I'm really interested in lately called direct primary care, where it's more like a subscription service. And those range way more. It's kind of like how many patients you want to take on. So that like allows you to kind of balance your life even better. For me, I think going into, you know, I never went into med medical school for the money or anything. That wasn't something like initially that I thought of. I was like really naive. Yeah. I was like, no, I'm just going to be a doctor. Like, you know, best profession in the world. And then like, as you get through training, like, oh crap, I need to pay off these student loans. Like how much can I make with these? So it's definitely something you should definitely think about. If you just want to do medicine, that's okay. A salary of over you know a salary of 200 is ridiculous money like that's kind of always been my goal i think like if i'm making 200 and i'm not super stressed at work that's kind of where i want to be making like that's kind of my goal and if i make a little bit more that that would be awesome but that's kind of the earning potential it's super variable depending on academic versus private academic tend to pay a little bit less than private and kind of everything in between that's that's family medicine in a nutshell okay um, so let me run the PA numbers. In general, PAs make around 100K, a little bit more. I think on average, some of the, the values that I've seen reported um, are like 110,000. Um, but again, it depends on the state that you're in, the city that you're in, the mm -hmm. specialty that you're working in. If you're doing something like pediatrics, um, unfortunately, insurance companies don't compensate too much for healthy babies. And so you won't be making as much money um, as kind of how I don't said some of the, the more procedure based um, specialties like um, um, one example, one of the highest paid MPAs is in, in dermatology. And the reason for that is that a lot of the, those providers are getting their base salary and then also getting um, compensated for each procedure that they do. Every lip filler, every, you know, Botox injection, they're taking a cut. And so that really can inflate your um, income. And mm -hmm. it's not uh, uncommon to hear um, like Derm PAs making upwards of 150, even greater than $200,000. Um, again, it, it really varies on the practice and who you're, you know, working with. Um, but yeah, and I've seen job listings for um, like in, internal medicine uh, PAs and, and PAs and in, um, in, what was the other specialty? Oh. Wound care. Wound care really is also mm -hmm. one of the very lucrative specialties where um, a lot of those providers are making upwards of one hundred fifty to one hundred sixty thousand dollars a year. Um, but again, I think the average for a PA is closer to a little above one hundred k. I do believe if you're as a PA, if you're making less than one hundred k, you're not being compensated uh, mm -hmm. adequately. But again, really dependent on the specialty that you're in. And then again, one of the nice things, as I've said before, is like the flexibility to switch between specialties. So if you're, mm -hmm. you know, like tired of working in emergency medicine, or you really want to switch to another specialty that's going to make you, you know, more money, you, you can do that. And so there's a lot more, I guess, a wider range in, in your uh, income. 
Mm -hmm. um, MDs essentially have a higher cap, like they're for sure going to be making more money than your PA, um, but your PA is going to vary, like whether you're making closer to 100 or closer to 200. And so it's something to keep in mind. Okay. All right. So next question, what do you consider, Aron, the biggest pro and con? This is a hard question. What is the biggest pro and con of your profession? Oh. The biggest pro specifically in family medicine is kind of like um, what you're describing as a PA, Mario, like that flexibility to work in all these different settings. If you're somebody like me and gets bored doing the same thing over and over, like switching from the ER to wards to like labor and delivery to just clinic. Um, I think that's the biggest pro within family medicine, as well as, you know, you get to make these really long term relationships with patients. You know, I've been working in family, you know, family medicine for a while, like volunteering at these clinics. I see my patients at Walmart and then, you know, they see me and they're like, hey, what do you think about this food that I'm buying or anything about this? So, you what know, you think it's about this rash. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what do you think about this rash or this pimple? All the all those things like out in the community, there's nothing like it. And for me, there's nothing like when I walk into a room and I say, hola, como estas in Spanish and their faces light up because they're like, finally, a doctor that's going to hear me, listen to me like understand me like i don't have to yeah. go through a translator that's my favorite feeling in this entire world so those are the biggest pros and kind of what keep me going and i think is going to keep me going for a really long time cons inside family medicine is a documentation prior authorization all of that insurance like headaches it's just a really big pain in family medicine there's not enough time in a day to take care of your patients properly and like you know document adequately so you see a lot of family medicine doctors like work four days a week and then one whole day of pure documentation and you still like are probably not catching up on it so that's one of the biggest cons in the profession of family medicine i think you know a lot of other specialties kind of struggle with it a little bit too but i think family medicine because you are that hub and you know you're referring to specialists you're like refilling medications and you're trying to keep on top of the patients you know healthcare struggle with this a lot more than others and i would definitely say that is the biggest con in family medicine. Okay, so very good answer. And um, I think kind of the, the biggest pro, I think two of them, uh, one is kind of like how I don't say the, the flexibility in family medicine. I would say that we're kind of a step further in terms of flexibility mm -hmm. and where you can even work in kind of other specialties that uh, may not be available to a family medicine provider. So being, you know, like a medical oncology PA or being, like I said before, in working in like uh, trauma surgery, working in cardiothoracic surgery, working as a neurosurgery PA, or even specialties that are not surgery focused. Like there's, I think, that additional level of um, flexibility that, that is, is afforded to, to a PA. And the second pro um, is that you are also generally taking on less debt and you're spending less time in, in school. Training, and yeah. if, we, <laughs> if we compare... Um, I did, you know, of like actual education, I have four years of my bachelor's degree, and then about two years and some change um, for my, you know, PA education. And so that's seven, given no, four or five, six years um, of, of education under my belt. And that doesn't include all the two years that I took off to acquire my patient care experiences to apply to PA school. Mm -hmm. um, so that took an additional two. Um, but yeah, in total, it's six years of, of being in school, showing up to to lectures. Um, as a MD, we're talking four years of your bachelor's degree, another four years of med school. And then how long is your residency at on? My residency is three, and they can range from like three to up to like five and even seven. Like if you're doing like those neurosurgery um, kind of specialties, it can, it can be a really long time. But family medicine is three. Most are between three and five. Okay, so we're talking essentially the difference between PA versus MD of like six to seven years versus like 11 to 12 years. And so I mentioned this just so that you, you keep that in mind. If you're someone who like has a family and like you're in a position where um, like you just want to, you know, you want to be out there um, already working and, and kind of getting, you know, a salary where you can care for your family if you're like a husband or, you know, you have like kids in the PA profession may afford you um, some of that more um, flexibility to start practicing sooner and start getting, you know, a more um, um, stable, you know, income to, to care for your family. And I know that that's, that's a huge thing for, for a lot of uh, students. 
Yeah, I think one of the the big cons of the the profession is that we are kind of newer, and so there is kind of this discrepancy that that um, um, with you know some patients and and the misnomer that our name carries as physician assistants, and they'll be like, oh, I'm seeing the assistant, like mm-hmm. you know, I want to see the doctor, and patients are well within their right, and but I think there there still is this kind of uh, lack of of just education and knowledge of what a PA is trained in and what we can really do. And as PAs like that is just an opportunity also, even though it's a con, an opportunity for us to educate people, the public about what we can do and, and how we're in crucial in, uh, team members of the healthcare team. And so, yeah. And then the other con is also just in, in terms of like legislation, because we're also new. There's also a lot of mm-hmm. laws that are, that are, you know, coming about that impact our profession and a lot of talk about, you know, our autonomy and like, should it be full autonomy? Should it be limited? And so that that's something that I am, don't think, you know, like, you know, Aron and our MD partners uh, face. Their profession yeah. has been established for, you know, more than for hundreds of years. And so we're still kind of in that, uh, not infancy, because we've been around for almost like 50 years. But, mm-hmm. but yeah, something to, to uh, keep in mind. Yeah, kind of going right, off a little bit before the last question, Mario, the yeah. whole con um, on the training. So I do want to let like, you know, the viewers know, you know, during residency, you are earning a resident salary. And these are like around six, like I'm going to start at 60,000, but I'm gonna get, only going to earn like those 60 for the next three years, as opposed to start earning that higher salary that Mario is like, after two years of PA, you know, I still have like another two years of medical school, and then a, another three years of residency where I'm getting paid you know, $60,000 a year to work 80 hours a week. Um, so just keep in mind that in the back of your head, if that's something, um, you know, if you want to explore a little bit more, but even like the surgical specialties, it does increase a little bit every year, but you are going to be earning a much lower salary than even a PA. What would even. that come out to an hour? <laughs> um, it's less than minimum wage. That's for oh, sure. That yeah. is ridiculous. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's not just uh, exclusive to MDs. I've seen some. So one of the things that I, before I forget, that exists is uh, postgraduate uh, training for PAs. There are like fellowship, like mini residencies that mm-hmm. last like mm-hmm. about a year for PAs. Like if you want to get additional training in, um, I don't know, like pediatric uh, neurosurgery or be in a receive more training in emergency medicine, you can go do that. And I've actually even seen some residency programs paying like, 1550 an hour for mm-hmm. PA during that residency. Yeah. So kind of similar to like, I don't even, I don't remember what minimum wage is, but like that is not, you know, a, a the full <laughs> salary that we just talked about, 100K or 200K. Exactly. So, yeah. So final question, and this is my favorite question. What would you tell that student that is trying to decide between PA versus MD? And I'll let, I'll let you, I don't start with this Ooh. one. Yeah, so uh, I kind of, you know, Whenever I agreed to this interview, I told Mario, I was like, you know, before med- before, yeah, medical school or anything, I didn't really know what a PA was. Um, so that wasn't really, a, you know, a decision I had to think too hard on from a pretty, you know, when I decided I want to be a doctor, I was like, oh, like, yeah, I just want to be a doctor. I want to be able to make the decisions. But I never really compared and contrasted the, the two professions. I think that, you know, I've, I've, had, I've had the opportunity to work with some really incredible PAs um, over, you know, as I started medical school. And something I noticed really early on between PAs and MDs is PA students have way more clinical experience on average than the medical student. Not more than me because I had a ton of extracurriculars before medical <laughs> school. But like on average, PAs have a lot more clinical experience than medical students starting. Um, so I think that's something that I noticed and I felt like the PAs were blowing us out of the water when we were doing like these OSCEs, you know, talking to patients. Um, but I didn't really struggle on deciding between MD and PA. So I'll kind of hand it over to Mario and, and let's hear his thoughts on it. Okay. I think, you know, I going into UCLA, I was pre-med and was considering like I was studying for the MCAT and stuff like that. It wasn't until my lung collapsed that I was diagnosed and, uh, and cared for by a PA. That was my junior year of college when I first met a PA and and uh, kind of 
discovered this profession. So my lung collapsing was like the best and worst thing that happened to me. <laughs> and, but I, I started, you know, like doing some research and really that's kind of the, the take home message, really do your research. Um, and as I started to realize like what the PA profession offered, the ability to be trained as a generalist, to get out, you know, of school a little bit quicker um, and, and to be afforded that flexibility to switch between specialties, because again, I couldn't see myself, you know, doing one specific specialty for the rest of my life and still providing that opportunity to be involved in like education and be involved, you know, be like a faculty at a, at a program somewhere, mm -hmm. somewhere in like all of those things kind of just sold to me. And the PA profession over over um, MD, um, but that that doesn't go without saying that no matter what you end up choosing, the grass is always greener on the other side. I've met a lot of amazing physicians who say like, you know what, if I could go back, I would do PA. And um, I've met like you know I've heard of PAs who end up doing it for two years and then they go back to med school because they just they wanted mm -hmm. that ability to make that final medical decision and. Uh, and I would be lying if I told you, you know, sitting here that sometimes like I haven't had thoughts of like, dang, I should have just gone to med school. They yeah, more have had preceptors tell me like, oh, why don't, like if you ever uh, decide to uh, go back to school to become a doctor, let me know. And it's just kind of like, dang, like those, those, <laughs> those ego hits. Like, yeah. And, but but then there's other days where I'm just like, this is where um, this is where I need to be. Like, I'm thankful that I'm a PA. Like I literally had that this week in, in family medicine, just having patients, you know, thank me for the care that I provided and just mm -hmm. confirming to me that I'm in the right career. Like you'll have those moments too. And so um, no matter what you end up choosing, I think the biggest thing that helped me is just really, you know, putting down on paper what your priorities are in life and really ranking those. Like, for me at the top is like being a husband and, you know, in, in the future, also being a dad, like I, I, I want to have, you know, kiddos and be, you know, a dad that's right. That's not to say that you can't do that as a, MP. <laughs> so I knew I don't want. Yeah. like I definitely think that it, it, it does afford a little bit more um, kind of just flexibility mm -hmm. and, and work-life balance to be able to, to, you know, be that, that dad that I want to be. Um, and then third is my career in medicine. And so, um, I do feel like if you aren't someone who, you know, is really prioritizing like a relationship or you have no interest, you know, in getting married, which again, like you can totally do it. You can go and become a doctor and have, be a dad and be, a, you know, everything that you want to be. Um, but those are all, I think, factors that you really want to sit down, think about what matters to you. Um, and then that will make it more clear, you know, what choice you should make. Yeah. And, and yeah, like I, I, I feel very like privileged to be able to, you know, be in this position and, and be, you know, six months out from graduating. And like mm -hmm. my wife recently uh, found out she got into her PhD program um, to be a clinical psychologist. Mm -hmm. And so I'm extremely proud of her and just mm -hmm. knowing that I'll be in a position where I can financially support us. Um, and, and, you know, just having, cause we're not going to sugarcoat it. Like finances during med school, during PA school, during residency, they're tough. Like you, you, I don't know what your experience was, but you penny pinch. And, and, yeah. and that's something that I don't think is talked about enough. Right. Um, and, uh, yeah. So I, I like look forward to being able to, you know, provide for my family and being yeah. able to afford us that financial stability mm -hmm. while she's going through such a rigorous program. And so those are all just things I just say that, like, not to brag, but just to like kind of give you a picture of like what goes into making that decision um, and just encourage you, you know, if you got to the end of this video to really sit down, outline your priorities and, uh, and yeah, and, and, and make the choice that is best for you because it's not, it's not just like, oh, PA is better, MD is better. Like, yeah. you know, we're all part of the healthcare team, as we've said before. And, and at the end of the day, we're here to care for our patients and do right by them. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. piggyback off of that. So, you know, kind of like going into, you know, medical school, I was super naive. That's kind of like one of the biggest things. Like, I didn't really, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Like, and it was kind of, you know, that's one of the blessings, like, you know, being Mexican American or Mexicano in general, like you just you you can work. We know how to work. So yes, you know, I put in the work, and I ended up here. And then when I was here, I was like, "What did I do to myself?" <laughs> and you know, I I do want to also you know thank my my beautiful wife too. She like supported you know she supported my dreams all throughout. And I was kind of like as I was kind of going through rotations and deciding what I wanted to do. 
you know, at the end when I just started on family medicine, she was like, thank God. She's like, I <laughs> want you to go into surgery because I don't want to raise the kids alone. You know, yeah. like that's something she said. And it, and my priorities definitely switched. As When I started medical school, you know, I was like, oh, medicine, like that's all that was like consuming my life. But then my relationship with my wife grew. And then I was like, you know what? This is more important than my career. Um, and it kind of switched as I as I got through training and I got a little bit more older. And, you know, you kind of find out what your, what your priorities are. And, you know, it, I, I feel like it happened too late, but everything happens when it's supposed to. Yes. Um, so if that is something, you know, you're thinking about, you're, you have a partner, just, you know, have good communication. You know, she supported me like unconditionally, but um you know i think it's you know i'm just so grateful and time to time to switch it up i think in the next next three years but it's kind of how it is that's awesome and and uh it's also really cool and to to like be able i think to you know show up here and and we're both you know like a similar age married like i know some people would be like dang you guys are too young to be married i feel like i, I know it's awesome just went to, my wife and i went to mazatlan <laughs> literally every time we would sit down somewhere like oh like is that some bonitos novios, you know, and I was yeah. like, oh, no, I'm like, this is my wife. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, pick it out, dog. <laughs> I know. And so that, that's awesome. Um, but yeah, guys, eso es todo. These were essentially the, the questions. We hope, again, that this video um, was helpful or ha will be helpful to help you make that decision um, for your future career in healthcare. And again, uh, you can follow Aaron on Instagram as Aaron underscore El Mas Cabron and my channel, <laughs> The Mexican PA. <laughs> and uh, you can also um, make sure you uh, check out Aaron's uh, YouTube channel. Just his name, Aaron Trillo, T-R-I-L-L-O. And I'll make sure to attach that in the link down below. And awesome. if you have any other questions, be sure to comment below. We're here for you guys. And mm -hmm. I know Aaron kind of just shares that desire as well to be essentially the the, the mentor um, you know, for for you guys. And so so any questions that you have, put them in there and, and we will we will answer them. And Animo Plebes, thank you for watching. Thank you for having me, Mario. Thank you, Aaron.